this is Joe from IC Group again with a new video. Um, today's video is not YSJ related, um, but it shows a nice way of handling data table classes, uh, those that are used by ORMs such as Dapper, for example. Uh, in one of my apps I had the requirement to be notified whenever a property in such a data table class changes. So uh, I came up with the solution to implement an event handler that is fired whenever a property of this data cl table class changes. Um, and I would uh, like to show how I've implemented this. So let's start creating a new project. A console application will be fine. Uh, the name, let's call it data table table class. Okay, here we have the project. Now let's add the data class. Uh, let's call this uh, data. That sounds like a good name. The data table class usually has a property for each table field. For example, it would have an integer of ID. Um, a string called name and so forth. I think you get the picture. So now if I want to be notified whenever such uh, a property changes, usually by assigning a value to it and uh, which invokes the set method, I would to get an, I would like to get a notification. And for this, we have the I notify property changed interface, which is defined in component model. Okay, but I have to implement this interface. So what you see here, it added this event handler. So now I have the event handler, but this event handler is never invoked because it's not called and called anywhere. So um, attaching to this event handler will have no effect. What can we do about this? It doesn't work when the property is defined like this. You need an internal variable, which is usually private. Uh, it's an int like this and the get methods and the set methods have to be changed. Get means um, I want, oh, that, that has worked already. Okay, so I have a get method that reads the internal variable. I have a set me um, a method that sets the value. And this is actually the point where I will have to uh, call the property changed event handler. So let's do that here. Property changed, only invoke it when it's not null. Okay, what are the arguments? The arguments is the sender, which is usually this. And we need a new property changed event args. And this property changed event arc uh, wants the name of the property, which in this case is ID. Okay, did I mix up the brackets? No, oh, that's fine. So, whenever this uh, property ID is set, the property changed event handler will be invoked. Um, but it may happen that the old value and the new value are identical. In this case, I don't want the property change event handler to be invoked. So what I'm doing here is if id is not value, then I call. I think this is clear. Now I have to implement this for each and every property in the class. Of course, going to use this one. I need a new internal variable uh, of type string name name. Uh, 
the name, no, name, and also here, the name is name now. Okay, you see where this ends up. This ends up in a lot of code and a lot of uh, uh, garbage that is repeated every time. A lot of lots of redundant code. So we'll have to come up with a way to make this a little easier. Uh, wouldn't it be nice um, if uh, we could get rid of all those local variables and have only one place to store the property values? Well, that's when the dictionary comes into place. Now let's make up a dictionary. Dic no, not dic dictionary. Dictionary. That's that's what I need. I call this values, instantiate. Okay, now we have the dictionary. But we also need uh, getter and setter methods to make our life easier. So, protect it. Uh, well, this might, this getter might be type uh, dependent. So, I'll use a generic type. Get value. I also have to tell this uh, getter which prop which is the property name that I want to retrieve. String property name. Okay. What I can do now is I want to be on the tr on the safe side, so I will not use what uh, IntelliSense. Uh, suggests here, I will use uh, the try get value method. So if uh, values dot try get value, property name out value, that sounds correct. In this case, I want to return the value itself. But what if the property name wasn't present? Uh, so in this case, I want to return not null, but default. Okay, so I'm satisfied with this. Let's get over to the set value method, which is, of course, void set value. What do I want to set? It's an object of name property value and I call of course I need the name string property name now that the trick is to try to read the value and if uh, it's null or the uh, new value is not equal to the old value then set it so first of all we have to values try get value Okay, now we have the value. Let's see if it's equal. If um, not value dot equals. I use equals because I'm dealing with objects here and cannot use the, the equal signs. Um, property value. Okay, in this case, when the old value is not equal to the, to the new uh, value, I will set it, property name equals property value. And of course, I have to call the property change event handler. Property changed, invoke only when not null, invoke, okay, the property name Set there, property change, event arcs. Okay, that sounds fine. No errors. So, what I did, na did now is I make use of the property change event handler. I put all values of the properties into a dictionary. I have a common get value method which retrieves property values from the dictionary. And I have a set value method that sets the properties of 
the class. So now I can get rid of the internal variables and when I want to retrieve this value I call values dot no I call get value and I have to define the type the type in this case is int and I need the property name which is ID also I use set value first of all the value itself and then the property name which is ID I also have the have to do this for the name its name now of course name I think I'm missing something So what does not work here is I need a string. Okay, that looks fine already. So now the get value and set value me uh, methods are called. So uh, that should be fine for now. And uh, we are almost at the end. But um, there is another nice trick I would like to show you, which in this case means I use uh, caller member name, this attribute, which is not reachable, so use compiler service. Okay. And the error tells me now that it may only apply to parameters with default values. So I need a default value here. Okay. So now I'm fine. Caller member name, I also use this here. default value. That looks good. So what's the reason for um, adding this? Caller member name um, instructs the compiler to use the calling property and assign it to property name. So the effect is I can get rid of this. And the compiler automatically uses ID and passes it to a parameter property name. Same here. Okay. So as a last step, it would be nice if we could get rid of all this and put it into a base class. So let's have a base class. Add class base class and get rid of this put it here of course I need the component model and I need the compiler services compiler services now it should compile and in the data class I use base class There was an error. I have to put value here. Okay, so now we're ready. Let me summarize. We have the base class, which implements the property change event handler, and all property values are uh, stored in a dictionary. And we have two accessors, the get value and set value methods. The property name is automatically passed by the compiler. The get value tries to get value. If it uh, was successful, then it returns the value. If not, it returns the default. The set value um, accessor tries to get the value. If it w uh, was, uh, if the value is null or has a value, uh, doesn't matter because equals only returns true if the new property value is exactly the same as the one that was retrieved from the dictionary. So if it's not equal, then we set the property value in the dictionary and we invoke the property changed event handler. So now in the data class, this is 
the class that is used by the ORM. Uh, it's derived from base class, so um, we can use the get value and set value methods, and it's pretty easy. Now, if you have uh, more fields in the data table and you have to more have to add more more properties here in the class, the properties look much cleaner and uh, make your life so much easier and makes the code look prettier. So that's it for today. I hope you liked this video and see you next time. Bye bye.